We're going to yes, record. You Thank you, Julie. The good kids. I, the good kids. The bad kids. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's like, you know. We won't, name, we won't name the bad kids. No. No, 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 no. No bad kids naming here. Um, you know. Let me have I, a share, Jules. Oh, let me let you share. Okay. Um, you know that if if I don't talk, that means there's a problem. Because I'm tired. <laughs> when I get quiet, it's just like. It's not good when Julie's quiet. No shit. Even though you may want me to be quiet. <laughs> we don't we don't want you to be quiet. You really don't want me to be quiet. Tom and All I right. are like, no shit, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. Um, Facebook, we're, I'm glad Shut we're live on today. Facebook. Facebook and Instagram were having some serious issues today. So we weren't sure we were going to be able oh, to go no. live, but we are we are here and we're glad to be here. Um, Andrea is out on the road. So she is right between a, Iowa and Michigan on her way to Michigan. Yeah. On her way. Just so crossed the mighty Mississippi, apparently. She's on yeah. a big road trip. So we miss her, but um, she's in our thoughts. And um, Shannon and Steve and Amanda, I can't wait till Amanda Barillas gets on here with a shit one of these days. Oh my and gosh. I know. Sales I conference keep, week. Oh my gosh. Sales, Sales conference, conference week. We're hoping one of these days she shows up. And then. Um, oh, it'll happen. We're due for a. Oh. Oh, Hachetti. <laughs> That's what um, <laughs> we did that event with, um, a, a shed event with Elvira and um, oh. Peaches Christ. Oh. oh my God, it was the best event ever. So Peaches Christ is a drag queen, right? So she was talking and she was talking about the book while she said she pronounced Hachette Hachetti, like machete. Oh my God. I mean, nobody else probably is laughing except for all the people who right. know. It was just like, all oh, the, was, all the book, book, book all people, the bookstores. Book they brought down the not, house. Yeah, they were dying. It was pretty funny. It's French. So, we're live. French. Hachette, Hachette, Hachette. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, and then supposedly we're going to be with Mike Slack. We need to say goodbye to Mike Slack because he retired, took early retirement at the end of September. Um, so we'll have a new McMillan rep that might want to join us. So who knows? Might he see some fresh blood on here in a few. In I a thought few I thought you were going to say Mike was going to join us today as just to mm. say goodbye and hello and goodbye. Yeah, goodbye. no. Mike is in so he's Milan. Out. He's out as of as of Fair September thirtieth. Um, yeah, happy to be gone. He. Um, he's in Milan right now, so let's not feel too sorry for him. <laughs> oh, no, he was happy with his deal. He, he sounded, he seemed happy. He he's was good. glad. He's, so. I love, oh, yeah. yeah. I love Mike. All right. Enjoy my um, bro. Okay. So today it's just the three of us kids. So um, we should go relative. Who knows? We go quick. It might take us a long time. We might chat too much. Who knows? Um, Gabe, you'll start and then Tom and I'll fill in with whatever I've got. Okay. I will start then. And I'm okay. starting a big time. Uh, I didn't share my thing in the right page, but that's okay. I left ahead. So tomorrow, Ooh. Um, one of the bigger books of the season goes on sale. Now, I thought I had a pretty big book, and this is a season of a lot of big books. Uh, I think one of the saving graces, I'm not saving grace, it's been a really good year for books, but looks like the fall is going to be monster. The Lauren Groff is out. There's a, what's his name? Uh, the depressed guy uh, coming out. Uh, <laughs> the McSweeney guy, Dave Eggers, got a book coming out. Wait, who's the, who's, out the depressed who's the depressed guy? Who's the depressed guy? Brandon. I know. Who is the Brandon. depressed guy? I thought he was going to say it, but it's like, shh, we're hosting it for an event, too. And you got I Anthony know, I, Door. There's a lot of big books. There's a lot, a lot of, of big books. books. There's a lot and of we have a lot of big books at Harper, and we have some of our big mainstay authors with big books. Uh, and, uh, and, I went out and sold to Dave Grohl and people were like, let me have like a ton, which is not the case with smaller bookstores, you know, but um, this advanced better than some of my major, major writers in my store. So everybody's expecting a big deal. I was at the U uh, FedEx store getting a poster made uh, for one of my stores on the Sunset Strip and uh, for the window and uh, everybody in the place was like, what's that? What are you doing with the Dave Grohl? He said, oh, he's got a book. I heard the Howard Stern thing the other last week. So everybody was like, and the whole store was up on Dave Grohl. So multi-generational talent. Uh, you know, he was um, started off uh, in a really small, small band years ago, his Nirvana years, his Foo Fighter years, 
um, I, I, you know, we live in LA, so you could show up anywhere, show up at the Troubadour one night and he'll be there banging the drums with some band. You know, I was, went to see Queens of the Stone Age years ago, really great show. And who's on the drums is Dave Grohl. You know, he's, he works with everybody. He's got that great HBO special. Um, I think it was HBO, like a five-parter. Um, that was really, really interesting. And he went all over the place, yeah, all these smaller studios and personal studios and interviewed people. So he's part of this, definitely part of the insider's world of the music scene. He is a musician. He's a very active musician. As I said, he's collaborated with a zillion art, other artists. Anybody who's anybody has probably uh, had Dave Grohl bang the, the drum on the background or worked with him or studioed with him or something. So uh, very excited. Um, he wrote that great letter uh, about a year ago, support of teachers, year and a half ago in support of teachers. His mom is a teacher. Um, so he gets out there in a lot of different ways. And I, you know, you're gonna see this in the morning shows, you're gonna see him at nighttime, on the evening shows, the late night shows. Uh, he's got really fun stories to tell. It really is a narrative of meeting Sir Paul McCartney, meeting, uh, I mean, he's met everybody. So it's all about all these great moments he's had in his life from his early days through the Nirvana years uh, through today and becoming such a, a force in the music world. So I'm really excited. I, the, the response has been really, really huge to this book. Um, and I think you, you know, we've got stacks coming, we've got signed copies coming at the end of the month uh, that are going into stores. Um, we couldn't get everything together to move kind of fast, but we're really excited about this book. Uh, he's sort of the every man who's a very special guy and everybody loves Dave Grohl. So be aware it's out there. I do get it early because yep. I keep hearing the boats in, are lined up all the way past yeah. Palos Verdes to get into Long Beach. There's like 73 giant uh, boats sitting outside of uh, LA Harbor waiting to unload. There's not enough truck drivers, blah, blah, blah. So uh, there's a bunch going out. There's a lot out there this week. Take advantage. But we're really excited. Great package, right? Great package. It is. And, it's great. Um, it's, when, is it out tomorrow? Tomorrow. Fantastic. Oh, I love Dave Grohl. And I mean, he is just, I think everybody loves it, but he is like, you know, like you said, he's that every man, he lifts so many people up. Mm -hmm. He's just one of those guys yeah. that he's not very like generous standoff yeah. guy. He's so generous and that he's so endearing. And it's just like, oh, I hope this just, I mean, I know it will, but it's just, I'm excited for us to be able to sell it. Um, yeah. In a, in a world of big books, this one seems to be spreading yeah. itself and he's reached that stage he's reached that stage where he's icon he's an icon now like you go yeah. from grunge the early days and you know he kept working and working and, but now he's yeah multi-gender crosses generation crosses and um, just as a you, you just i mean maybe he's maybe it's a persona but i he just is a good it just seems like a good guy like it's mm -hmm. just like if you saw him on the street yeah. he'd be a good guy you know um so cool nice one gabe love it okay tom what do you got Okay, so all oh, I need to okay. say. What do you got? On sale tomorrow. So, well, let me take you back nine years ago when Viking published a little book called Rules of Civility by Amor Tolls. You may have heard of that, but it was published, you know, great reviews. Booksellers loved it. You know, great book, great publication. I have Followed the very first a... book he ever signed. It's behind oh, me. Let's see it, Julie. Let's I need, it. I'll turn my video off. I'll let you talk for a minute. <laughs> Okay. Then a few years ago, we published A Gentleman in Moscow. That was one of those books that started off strong, but just never let up. And so it's never born. It was word of mouth, a word of mouth phenomenon that um, you all remember. So it's now time tomorrow. I'm almost sad that it's, it's time for it to be out in the world because I've been anticipating it so much, but time has come. Amor told The Lincoln Highway is on sale tomorrow. And um, the first question that I had and probably every lover of the first two books is like, is it as good? Uh, it is. And what's interesting about his books is that every reader, every fan has it, like some people prefer rules, some people prefer gentlemen. Um, and I think there'll be, a, there'll be a contingent that prefer the Lincoln Highway. Did you find it, Julie? Oh. Here, my friend, wait, wait, wait. Uh this is the first book I've ever signed. I am so glad you oh enjoyed my God. it. Right there. Let's see if we can see it. 
I First love it. Proof. Signed book wow, by Jules. A. War Tolls. That is fantastic. I yeah. love so, it. So Warwick's, Warwick's, Julian Warwick's was on the A. War Tolls, you know, t- train from day one. And that's, again, it's this, I mean, the success of A. War Tolls goes to indie booksellers like Warwick's who discovered him early on, just kept hand selling and hand selling rules of civility until, until the time was right for uh, gentleman in Moscow, and then that exploded everything. So now I think he's going to take an even bigger jump with the Lincoln Highway. So first of all, I I've never heard of the Lincoln Highway. It's a precursor to the route to Route 66, but this is yeah. the early part of the 20th century that went from Times Square to San Francisco. Um, but it was just smaller roads, but it's kind of like Route 66. But I just never heard of it. So it begins in the seven to 1950s. Um, and what, I don't have a copy of the book. I was going to show how it's set up because it's set up. It's ca- a countdown of days. Uh, I mean, and Amor is a master of many things. One of them is structure. And um, but I don't have a finished copy of the book yet. But anyway, so starts off in Nebraska, which is on the Lincoln Highway. Um, two teenage boys, two brothers. One of them has just gotten back from basically like reform school. And their intention is and their father has died. Their intention is to set off on the Lincoln Highway from Nebraska to San Francisco to find their mother who has left the family. But that's not how the book works. The book takes them in the other direction back to New York. First, there's a train. Um, there are so many adventures, I won't get into all of them because that's the discovery of the book. Um, there are, so there's the two boys, two brothers, and then there's another pair of characters who uh, kind of set everything in motion. And so they're at, they're, the, the two brothers set off after the other two characters to New York. And also, if you've read Rules of Civility, no one writes about old New York as well as Amor Toll. So he really, of course, captures that time and place. Um, so it's kind of a road novel, although not the road novel you expect. I read an interview with him this weekend and he said it's more of a journey than a road novel, a journey novel, because it doesn't take off. It, you know, you'd expect to be on the Lincoln Highway the whole way. That's not how it works. Um, but it has everything you want, the storytelling, the sophistication, the atmosphere, the, the, the line by line, you know, great prose, the insights into character and human behavior. It's everything. I think it's everything that if you loved either of those earlier books, you're ready. You want the Lincoln Highway. Um, Time Magazine calls it a rollicking cross-country adventure rife with unforgettable characters, vivid scenery, and suspense that will keep readers flying through the pages. So. The Lincoln Highway, A More Tolls, our biggest book of the year, without a doubt. Um, and Julie, yes. this week, Warwick's. Wait, right here. Right there. Right there. There it is. This Thursday, 6 p.m. I can't, right? He, he is so, you will love, if you haven't seen him, hopefully you've seen him in person because he's if he does this all. Once the books are out, he goes out everywhere talking to people. He's so great in person. He so and on Zoom, he will be just as great. He is. We've seen yeah. we've, we've seen a couple of prepub things with him, and he is so generous yeah. with his time, and he's so engaging, and his his answers, he's amazing. And so, if you're gonna buy the book, buy it here at the through the through yeah. the Eventbrite, um, because you'll get a signed copy, and he's gonna be in conversation with John Grisham. So come on, <laughs> what better way to I mean, spend a Thursday at six? No better. There's no better. I because I love John Grisham as a conversationalist too. I know. So I it'll can't be a wait great to hear those two together. I mean, so and so you, you know, you want the book. Get it now because of supply chain. Just get it now. Right. Right. And get it here for the event. Yeah, and the event, and it's you know simple, and we'll ship it to you through the event. You have access to the event, right? The whole nine yards. So it is absolutely. Um, Oh my God, I can't wait. Um, it's going to be such a great event. And he is, um, so he's doing a lot of um, virtual events, but come to ours. I think ours is going to be the best. So it will be, I guarantee it. Julie right. gar- guarantees it. I'm I sure. guarantee yeah. it's like, it's with a bunch of other stores and stuff too. So, um, so speaking of big bucks, and I just have to talk about this one, Shannon's not on here with us today, but um, I got to talk about this one just really quickly. Because speaking of supply chains and things that are going on, um, if you are at all thinking about getting this book, 
We have signed copies while supplies last. We just hosted him on Friday at an event down at USD. It was fantastic. He's a genius. This book is a genius. Um, it's just everything you want out of an Anthony Doerr book. So I know it's there's a lot of stuff going on and there's lots of things, but we all have room for lots of good big books. So get the gruel, get the tolls, and get the door. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> that could be a band. <laughs> I love it. Get the door. And I saw, I saw him <laughs> on uh, CBS Sunday Morning yesterday. And again, <laughs> and you know, you've met him, but he seems like the again the nicest guy. He is absolutely the nicest guy. So, I mean, we got three nice guy yeah. books right now. Let's support them. Let's like um, get their books because, yeah, um, I have that recorded. I haven't watched it yet, but I heard it was really good. Oh, it's really good. So, yeah. all right. Okay, Gabe, what's next? I'm trying to get over Anthony Doerr and Amor Tolls back to back weeks. I know. It's wow. a good, it's a good fall. Like we, we've been telling everybody that the fall is like packed. <laughs> loaded well and i think this and somebody brought this up a while ago and i think it was because they some of these might have gotten pushed because of covid into this oh. fall um maybe um i don't know if they were always slated for this fall um but this fall is packed um and warwick's is super lucky we get to host a lot of these it's cool to be warwick it's good to yeah. be warwick it's good to be warwick warwick yeah let's yeah. hear it for warwick I know. But enough about other people's books. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have the second uh, book in this great new series by author John Banville, who used to write these under uh, the name uh, Benjamin Black, and he sort of kept his oh, literary okay. books were, uh, were John Banville books, like, uh, you know, the ones that got nominated for the bookers and things. And then he... Uh, Used the the nom de plume. Uh, oh, good job, Gabe. For the mysteries, or nom de guerre, in my case. Ooh. And uh, we um we got lucky enough that uh, we we he landed at one of our imprints at Harlequin uh, of all imprints, and uh, one of our Harlequin imprints. And we are so excited to have him. We the the first book uh, we published uh, last year, Snow, and it introduced everyone to uh, Detective John Strat Strafford, uh, who is a uh, Dublin detective uh, and um, the, the wrong religion for the county that he was investigating in 1950s Ireland. Um, so uh, he's back, John Strafford's back in a completely different location. Um, the first book, it's, I love the, the timing, the first book was Snow, set in Ireland at an old manor house and an archbishop gets killed, um, all very Irish. In this book, uh, he's off to Spain because uh, there is a mystery to be solved in Spain. The, um, the uh, whatchamacallit, uh, 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 pathologist of the Dublin Police Department, Quirk, is on vacation in Spain. Uh, and he is poolside and soaking up the sun and he looks across and he sees this woman who uh, was supposedly murdered by her boyfriend uh, years ago and uh, something goes off in his head like well that's obviously her and he makes sure it's her and he makes a call to Dublin and um, where she was from and disappeared from and uh, they send the constable sends over Stratford so um, completely different environment. This is sunny, uh, sunny Spain, and um, it is a different time of the season, and it is a little brighter, uh, but still a really terrific mystery. And, and Snow was one of those books that I, I, uh, I was really excited about reading. And it's like, oh, great, we have, we have John Banville in the house. It's just really a great feeling when you get an author of that caliber comes over to work with you. And um, it was such, I thought it was a real great, I thought it was a treat. I really, really loved it. I read the UK reviews and they were a little uneven. Um, but this book is continuing to sell. The paperback just landed last week. I'm already taking, getting reorders uh, for the paperback of Snow. Uh, this book, uh, you know, getting started reviews as well. We've got a great package on it as well. Uh, very compelling. And if, you know, it's anything like Snow was, uh, get out there early. We ran out of snow really quickly last year. We brought it back into stock. Luckily, we got lucky that it was 
some hole in the zone of printing and we were able to sneak in there and we got it back before Christmas and I was able to sell a bunch more. Uh, being a salesman, it's all about the billing. Uh, so it's very <laughs> exciting to have a billable <laughs> author like this. But uh, you know what? Uh, this book, I mean, uh, Snow backlisted the entire year in Hong Kong for me. It is really, really rare that a book goes beyond a couple of three months. And in multiple accounts, most of my accounts, that book just kept getting reordered and reordered and reordered. So there's, there are a lot of fans. The big payoff, always a payoff with Banville. I said, I love Snow, and I really thought April in Spain is a terrific book. Uh, I'm really excited to have him on our list, and I will continue to talk. I'm going to sneak off because I got to eat a prop. That I left downstairs, Tom. So I'm not being rude. I know. Wait. Be back I saw, I saw, wait. I before you go, to get a prop as well. Wait. Before you go, though, I got to talk about Banjo real quick. So is he not going to ride under the Benjamin Black anymore? I. It looks like uh, he's just sticking with his real name, and I don't I like think it, it hurt. No, I don't either. But I just. Um. But I. It, I was wondering if there was any good, good backstory to the, why he made why he made the decision. Oh, now you made me like be asking questions. I know. That's good. Now we got to find out what <laughs> that backstory, be a backstory is. There's got to no, be a backstory. Conspiracy to it. And, theories. And before you leave, real quick, Gabe, um, Beth Doherty's on here. And just to note that Wiley Cash was yours, right? The When yes. Ghosts Come Home. She finished it this weekend and said it was terrific. He's terrific. Okay. He's terrific. If you have a chance, Land More Kind at Home in paperbacks, another fantastic read. He's just fun. But those two are. What um, was that one that you just rattled off? The uh, land, land? More, a land more kind than comb, which is a line from a uh, Tom uh, Wolf. A t a t a Time in a River. What's his name? Okay. Uh, Thomas Wolf. Thomas oh, Wolf. Okay. Okay. All right. okay now, you, now, you, now you can go get your prop. <laughs> go get your prop. Thanks, Gabe. All okay. right, Tom, what do you got? So I also went in search of a prop. So it wasn't, this wasn't the prop, but I got this too. So one of my favorite short story collections is Claire Bay Watkins' Battleborn. And we published this maybe six or seven years ago. And it was like a revelation. It was clear from this book that an uh, important writer was, we were, was born. Like this is, this was great stuff. So tomorrow we oh, published, right. I love you, but I've chosen darkness by Claire. And so, so in between Battleborn and the new book, she published a, um, I guess dysto it's a dystopian novel about the future of California. And it was, you know, as you can imagine, not uh, pretty. <laughs> what she imagined. Blink. <laughs> that that was gold, gold, fame, citrus. Those are the three things people come, had traditionally come to California for: gold, fame, citrus. Um, but not in her imagined future. So the new book is more, I guess, a return to Battleborn. It's it's set um, it's set very much in the present. It's almost a memoir. So in the first book, in in the first collection, there's a story called. Um, it called Ghost Cowboys, which deals with, which is a fiction, it's fiction, it's a story, it's brilliant, but it's about her father who was a peripheral member or around the periphery of the Manson family. In the new book, she's, um, the main character is Claire. So it feels like, you know, one of those novels that feels like a little memoir and a, and a little fiction. And she's embracing that. Like in her interviews, she's like, I'm not writing a memoir, but there's a lot in here, and that's me. So Claire, the writer, heads off to Reno um, to do a book tour. Um, and then from, uh, that's like the spine of it, but then all sorts, it spins out into all kinds of crazy things. She's just, she's a new mother, so there's postpartum depression as part of this, but really it's about Claire, the writer, um, both Claire, the character, and Claire, the writer. Um, coming to terms with her parents. So her mother, who was a, a, a drug addict, um, we see it throughout the book, she also plays with form a lot. There are letters from her mother, which I think are real letters. Um, and then there's excerpts from her father's unpublished mem uh, memoir, My Life in the Manson Family. So it's rich with uh, it, California history. Um, it's funny, she's funny, she's bleak. She's so real. I mean, that's what comes across is her. There's just like nothing gets by her. And so she is, you know, I guess she was born in Death Valley and she left the, She left California to go to the Midwest. She taught in the Midwest for a while. And now she's back living in, I think, 29 Palms. Um, she's, a, she's a creature of, she was born in Death Valley. She's a creature of the Mojave. She's a creature of, Cal. she's a, you know, California is her landscape. Um, so 
this book is going to be on all the it's going to it's going to get incredible reviews it's going to be one of the hot books on the 10 i'm sure it'll show up on a lot of 10 best lists of the year um and yesterday's <laughs> la times this is what i went to get this is a it's a full page which you don't see that often a full page interview wow. review with claire and the headline is amazing um I Love You But I Chosen Darkness is a novel torn from Claire Bay, Claire Bay Watkins' Desert Life, Manson Addiction, The Pursuit of True Freedom. The writer calls her the great writer of the American, the, new, the next great writer of the American West. So really high praise. We talked about Joy Williams a few weeks ago. I feel like there's a connection between Claire and Joy. Um, Karen Russell in her quote says, it's, this is a, the, the, the new book is a beautifully arranged tackle box of everything Watkins says best cut through the bone narrative of family apocalypses, custom blending of the historical, the unimaginable and the impossible, enchanting, terrifying encounters with the American West. The music of that place is the music of her language. So I, I highly, if you really like want cutting edge, really interesting, important fiction by important young writers, I highly recommend, I love you, but I chose the darkness. And I think that you're so right in the way that she writes it is that you're reading about a dark subject, but it's like, you don't feel like you're like mired in this like darkness, no. you know, even though that's no, darkness in the yeah. title, it's like, you, all of a sudden you read right. it's like, oh, that was like, what? <laughs> right. Even though like she has lived her life in the shadow of uh, drug addiction and the Manson family, for right. God's sake, right. um, outcomes are sometimes out of that comes art. And that's what's happened here. Yeah. And like you said, there's some funny parts. So yeah, it's really, it's really yeah. a good, good piece of work. But like, it's, I, I think you, I would put her in the thing of like, Rachel, um, is it Kushner? Yeah. Kushner? Rachel, Cu Rachel. Oh, Kushner. Yeah. 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 Rachel, Rachel Kushner. Rachel Cusk. Rachel Cusk. Um, but, but, but Kushner is, I think she wrote, um, I can't yeah, think, but Kushner's, that's where I that's, put. That's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. I think I would put her in the same kind of category with that. So, and I love, sure. I think the Mars Room was Rachel's book that I loved. So. Mm -hmm. Kind of the same uh -huh. sort of writing. Yeah. Okay. Lightning, we are not going any quicker with just two of you guys. I love it. It doesn't matter. We're just going to chat. So, quote unquote, to chat. quote unquote, lightning round next. <laughs> Go ahead, Gabe. And I, in my just more, year, about, I more been, of us to love. I know, right? I should have been better prepared because my lightning round book is probably the most involved book that I have. Um, Stefano Massini's. The book of non-existent words. Um, you know, it, it is a book that I read in a manuscript, and I read a lot of stuff. And most of I just I'm a big e-reader. I like everything on my iPad. I can wake up at three in the morning and not disturb anybody. Those little lights are bright. So um, I got this, and it was all text. And the same thing, reading on paper. It's, I got this, and it was all text. But the narrative is really, really fascinating. Um, and it is a uh, Stefano Massini uh, at a certain point in his life um, decided that words are meant to be created. Uh, he sort of that hit him at some point. In, and I think we all have done it. We all mix words, create our own words. Um, uh, you know, people who speak two languages tend to play with things like that with language. And uh, people who have a facility with words and like to play with words are always creating creating their own family words that stick through. Uh, but what Massino does is he's telling us these stories. Um, so he's writing about like Sir Isaac Newton, for example, and he will uh, uh, runs across a thought that um, he could explain using the expected verbiage, the accepted verbiage that exists and uh, or he can manipulate the language and create his own word that evokes the same thought as these writers. So he's writing about Louis the Fourteenth, Rosa Parks, uh, like I said, uh, Sir Isaac Newton. A number of characters come through here, and so you're reading this narrative. You're reading these stories, and they are about a certain topic. But then he'll deviate and he'll talk about other things. So it's one of these great books that just fills you with all this energy. And uh, and again, language is a great starting point, but then you get information as well from language and he uses the language to inform um, in his own really, really unique style. And I just, I loved it when I read it. I just thought, God, this is just so creative and brilliant. 
And I've always been of the opinion, I rem- one of my, my son always spoke a lot like I did when he was like little. People used to laugh at the way he spoke because he spoke like a grown up in a lot of ways and he used a lot of slang. And uh, his fifth, his kindergarten teacher was like, yeah, his language, his use of language, it's very creative. And he was really great, but she was disturbed by his use of lang- his misuse of language. And I'm right. like, you know, he's experimenting with the words. It really should be fun. It, in his head, it's mind's working, you know? Um, and Steven Pinker had written something, had just come out with his big book on language back in the, in the mid eight, I guess the early nineties, late eighties, early nineties. And um, it talks about words and language and speaking and how, you know, we all have our language. Uh, and I think we all create words. I think Alexander Pope uh, said it as well, you know, like we're, go out and create words, you know, and the masses create, the people create the words. It's not the powers that be. Otherwise we wouldn't have conversate in the dictionary and a lot of these other words, uh, but it's, you know, it's acceptance by the masses. Anyways, the, um, the other beauty of this book is, I don't know if you can see, that's the cover. Oh, I love it. I'm in a small oh, yeah. window. I'm going to stop sharing and show you the book itself. But that's the cover. So it's a wraparound. It's a paperback original. It was originally going to be a hardback, but you'll see why it's, it would have been really expensive hardback. I think they, I would have preferred it in hardback myself. But there's some of these wonderful images throughout that really punctuate the stories and what um, is going on here. So, uh, very Italo Calvino, uh, very um, creative and thoughtful. Uh, not your average fair, but if you love words, if you love language, uh, if you just like being exposed, again, you know, great stories about great people. Um, and um, Massini does it all. I think it's a wonderful looking gift. You know, every uh, the chapters are all decorated with. Uh, at least some minor uh, illustrations uh, and we're uh, so all the way through and it's very very cool art which goes along with the words a very avant-garde piece i think overall uh, and i think it'll make a great gift and I so you'd look really so you'd look really smart giving it as a gift to somebody that's you right do it. i think for i think like i said the italo calvino the george perec audience i think would love this but i think it's also for like the old school alexander pope more linear kinds of thinkers, uh, you know, old classical thought people will get a kick out of this because um, I just, it's fun. You sit around with words and yeah. you sit around with a great mind. And Italian fiction, Italian writing is, you know, is I'm reading, I've been reading a lot of Italian and, and Irish authors lately, uh, but there's a lot of Italian authors out there doing some really, I have a book coming that I've been wanting to talk about called Hummingbird by Sandro Veronese that his first book, um, we published and it was uh, quiet chaos, really wonderful. Anyways, a lot of good stuff coming out of Italy. <laughs> Wait, I'm writing I'm, down. I'm writing down. You're getting ahead of yourself. Right now. I'm getting ahead of myself, but you know I'm when writing you're writing down hummingbird right, right now, Gabe. Yeah, <laughs> I'll, I'll get you a galley. I love. Okay, it's yeah. like Jim Hankey, my partner in the San Francisco, uh, was. I didn't think it was as good as Quiet Chaos. He goes, but at the end, he goes, I started tearing up. I was like, that's it's and sure. it's brilliantly developed and devised and told and narrated in a really unique. This style. is my post-it, so I'm sending yeah, it okay. to you virtually. <laughs> <laughs> Send me that. <laughs> no, that the book about so language about? though sounds really good. I mean, that sounds like and it sounds like it could be one of those gift books that you could kind of just give to anybody that they could just pick up and would get something out of it, you know. I, absolutely. I think a thoughtful yeah. person, anybody who's you know, who reads. Anybody who likes a book, anybody who's into words, yeah, um, will definitely. If you have a reader uh, in the house, I think because it's it's like I said, it's avant garde in its way, but it's really just really super readable. Because I think it, that's a hard thing about gift giving, and this is something to think about too when you're um, thinking about gifts. It's like everybody wants to, you know, oh, I don't know what kind of reader they are, or they've read this, and what's the next best thing. And sometimes it's like right. you just get a book like that that's so right. off the. The normal channel of what that person might read but it's still a great gift right you now yeah exactly is that, yeah. You, like you want another short story collection from somebody who you are i mean you it's subjective every read is right. subjective but right. something like this i think does it has a much uh, broader yeah. 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 okay tom it sounds like a real home. that sounds like a re- real sleeper like that's a book that yeah I you're not going to so. hear about everywhere but you're going to hear it here yeah yeah
I think it looks smart. Right? Am I right, Gabe? You know, it's from our. Uh, That's why we're... it's from our uh, translation in Print Via, and they're okay. doing some really good oh, cool. stuff in Via. And Hummingbird is also Via, so expect good stuff. Um, so my my lightning round is Yay! Major Labels by Kala Fasana. Now he is um, he was a longtime cri uh, music critic at the New York Times. Now he's at the New Yorker. And he's been, um, you know, he's been a famous music critic for decades, but this is amazingly, this is his first book. Um, and when you read it, I guess you understand. So he's tackling all the pop, all, all genres. So rock, R&B, country, punk, hip hop, dance, and pop. And what I, there's so much to love about this book. I mean, his knowledge is encyclopedic. I mean, it's unbelievable what he knows. As I was reading the rock chapter, which I'm really into, you know, he, uh, I think I'm thinking, well, he's gotten pretty far and he hasn't mentioned, you know, this man, REM or something. And then sure enough, the next page, he gets into the REM period. Um, and then he gets into heavy metal, which I really don't know that much about. But that's the beauty of this book. It, all of it, I've read so much of this, so many of the different, there's, they're long essays. But even if you think you don't care about country or R&B or his writing is so invites you in and his knowledge is so deep. You want to you want to follow him on this journey through the history of the last fifty years in popular music. Um, it's really an incredible feat. Um, so, uh, and and he had a great piece also on. Um, he's also a contributor to CBS Sunday Morning, and so he had a really fun piece on yesterday's Sunday Morning, um, where he kind of went back to his own roots of where he, you know, his his roots are in punk music. Um, so it was really it's great. He's fantastic. This will be a great gift for a lot of different kinds of readers, I think. But it's, but it really, we say this is something that publishers say a lot. It's in the read. It, this is definitely in the read. It, the read is so good. Um, it helps if you like, you know, some of these genres, but um, you don't have to love them all because he's so good. So that's major labels: history of popular music in seven genres. Fun. Another great, another great gift book. I've seen that on the yeah, tables totally. in the stores, and I was like, I must have. Like, it's a really interesting. Uh, yeah, it's a really yeah. Interesting they got it right, I think, too, with the cover and the. I mean, it's it's good. It looks like one of those posters from, from the. It looks like the posters that would be up in the, up in the music venues. That's right. It's CBGBs or yeah, exactly. Yep. yep. All right, everybody. Um, boy, there's lots of good books, and they're coming out out already. Um, you know, yeah, like I said, Anthony Dora, I can't wait for the Dave Grohl and um, Amor Tools this week. Next week we've got, oh, I wanted to show you all something. Um, wait a second, I gotta get to this because I want you all to sign up for something for me because my friend, um, hold on here. Let me see if I, I always look like such a like knucklehead when it comes to doing this. <laughs> Todd Dowdy right here. Oh, um, yeah, has got a book. He is the publicist extraordinaire, which I adore of people like Ian McEwen and Aaron Morgenstern and Margaret Atwood. Margaret Atwood I and I mean, Chris Bojalian, he is the he is the vice president now some big yuppity up job that he's got. So he doesn't really do too much with the with his hands in the publicity part of it. I don't think anymore. But he's got a book coming out next week. And we're hosting him. It's a free event to join books called Little Pieces of Hope. And do me a favor, sign up, come join it. You will be entertained. He is tremendous. He's going to be in conversation with Mary Laura Philpott. Um, the book is a little gift book. What he did over the when COVID started is he um, did an Instagram posting, not every day, but almost every day, I think, um, happy making things in a difficult world. And it was just a list of things of just kind of like stopping in the moment and, you know, just, I mean, I went down more Google rabbit holes from his list than you can imagine. <laughs> uh, but the little book is put together with some personal essays and some other things besides the list and some um, other drawings, but join Todd, join us next week. Um, I can't wait for that event too. Um, I know you saw Franzen on there. We still need little, we're still, we're still desperately all of us in need of little pieces of hope. So the time is just right for- Yeah, and I think book. it's gonna be a great, another one of those great gift books. So, um, so yeah. I mean, it's, it's, I think it's gotta be really weird coming from that Uber publicity side to being an of author. Course. 
and like going side. through and like right. seeing what it's like on the other side of that. So, um, you know, I've hosted a ton of his authors on the publicity side. I would love for everybody to show up for him as an author. So um, anyways, that's my little plug for that. Gabe, Tom, thank you again. I have, I have one last thing to just not say. Oh, look, what, 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 what's that all about? St. Louis, the St. Louis Cardinals versus the Los Angeles Dodgers this Wednesday. I see Gabe is wearing Cardinals colors, so oh, I know where he. I know where he. I know where he stands. He's gonna. He might take his shirt off right now. <laughs> I know. Stop, stop. Stop. When I uh, when I played sports, I used to always wear my socks the color of my enemy. <laughs> Look at. Did you I see like his it. eyes? His eyes got a little like I dead did. shark there a minute. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, let's as long as there's no there's no cheating, it's not the Houston Astros. It's not the Astros, yeah, that's right? And don't, let's we'll not even talk up, about we'll the We'll settle up next Monday. We'll see what it looks like next Monday. <laughs> yeah, and let's not even talk about the the. No, I know. We talk about it. Dodgers right. are supposed to be always supposed to be <laughs> always supposed to be. My husband is a is a is always every year at spring training. This is the year I said I've been married to you for thirty two years. Every year, <laughs> this is the year. <laughs> like, next year. It's like I'm so sick of that statement every spring. <laughs> Last every... year was like we got all the pitching we need. Last year we looked good in the play. We got the oh, pitching. There's got every every part of it is just like, oh my God. All right, everybody. Good night. <laughs> Thank right. you for joining us. Bye. We'll see y'all next week. Happy reading. See you next week. Yep. Bye.